Hello and welcome to today's European SharePoint and Office 365 Community Webinar. My name is Shane and I'm delighted to be joined by Louis Trije and Chris Marsh who will be talking to you about new imperatives for mobility, content and governance in the enterprise. Remember to join in the conversation about today's webinar on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at European SP and our hashtag is ESPC16. After the webinar, we will have a questions and answers session. Type any questions you have for Luik and Chris in the questions window. Some questions will be selected and answered at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and you will be notified by email when it is available. And now I'm going to pass you over to our webinar presenters. Hello, Luik. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, let me share my screen first. Screen. Here we go. So screen. There we go. All right, so thank you very much for joining us. I, <clears throat> prior to uh, getting into the subject of today, I would like uh, to... Uh, can I just jump in there? Yeah, if you just swap your presentation screen, that's it. Perfect. Thank you, Luke. Welcome. Sorry for that. So before we jump into the, <clears throat> the um, presentation itself, <clears throat> I wanted to uh, introduce our guest speaker today, Chris Marsh. So Chris is the um, works for 451 Research uh, and part of the research mobility team, which was established in July 2014. With integration of the Yankee Group, Chris focuses on the analyzing the impact of mobile social, social and cloud technology on enterprise and service providers. So he's on the editorial advisory board and is a regular contributor to Mobile Enterprise Magazine. He is also uh, on the advisory board of the EQPC, Enterprise Mobility Exchange Conference events, and of Enterprise App World. So before uh, joining the, um, the Yankee Group, Chris was a research manager in Nokia Global Consumer Analytics and Insights Function. So analyzing changes in the mobility landscape with a focus on identifying early indicators of changes in consumer behavior. Um, this insight fed into front-end strategy by outlining strategic uh, opportunities for brand and product development. So Chris holds an MA in International Relationship from St. Andrews University and an MRE's Master's of Research from King's College London. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Chris. Um, quickly on myself, you know, my side, just been um, you know, in sales and leadership for over 15 years. I've built a specialty around uh, knowledge around secure file transfer, regulatory and data management, um, focused on security as well. I've uh, been leading uh, for a year now the Coligo presence in Europe and um, you know, expanding this knowledge on data file transfer into the uh, SharePoint uh, space. So let's jump into um, you know the topic of today. So, um, Chris, how would you like to start this uh, conversation? Yeah, if you could, uh, I think maybe there's a build on this slide. So if you maybe want to uh, just click through the the build. Sure. And I'll uh, and I'll kick off and welcome everybody to the uh, webcast today. Perfect. Thank, thank you, Lowe. Thank you very much for the uh, the introduction. So um, I'm just going to kind of jump right in here because I think we've got a lot to cover between the two of us. Um, essentially, they'll all be looking at you know what mobility means for you know, workforce productivity, uh, and then obviously within that the role of content content management within enterprises' productivity uh, programs. Uh, so we'll be giving some perspectives. Um, around uh, around this topic. So, you know, first of all, just to kind of take a step back, I guess, and look at the progression that uh, that's underway that we all know is underway from a, a sort of PC-centric world to um, you know cloud and mobile. Uh, an awful lot has, has obviously changed. Um, specifically, I think with regard to content, you know, content is fragmented. Uh, we've got a proliferation of new sort of SaaS apps and other ways that 
uh, users can access content, uh, you know, as distinct from sort of traditional uh, ways of accessing it from, um, you know, backend repositories and applications and business systems. Uh, also, the, the infrastructure determining, you know, security around that content and access and governance of that content has also you know, obviously begun to change um, as more of that content is hosted in the cloud and accessible via mobile. So you know, a couple of broad and, and important changes I think are happening here. Um, first of all, the security paradigm has almost completely changed with mobile. There is a much broader range of threat vectors that I, I don't think is you know, hugely well understood um, but by you know the uh, uh, demand side here, um, it's a very uh, fluid uh, environment. So you know s security consistently comes out in our own uh, surveys that we do in 451 research amongst uh, IT and line of business decision makers as a um, you know key concern and a key driver of investments when it comes to mobile. Um, the context, you know, context is taught about a lot, uh, you know, when it comes to mobile. Um, the context of mobile users becomes obviously really important as there are more ways of getting work done now in a PC world. So things like, you know, users' location, the devices they're using, which could potentially be, you know, several across a singular uh, workflow. Um, the network they're on and a whole host of other sort of contextual attributes become very important in terms of how productivity is um, achieved or not achieved. Um, and there are, you know, new options around the supporting infrastructure for content management. Um, but, you know, one of the things we find, you know, with, with content, content management, uh, but widely across um, both sort of infrastructure and application layers is that companies don't, in, indeed they can't in, in most cases, throw the baby out with the bathwater, if you like. They need to, to protect their investment. So, you know, we, we're going through this significant change, but there is a certain sort of bridging mechanism from old world to new world, if you like, um, that is uh, that, that needs to happen for, for companies. So just on the, on the next slide. Um, so, you know, real challenge here, but real opportunity as well. Um, if you could just advance the slide, Loic. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I was Great, struggling. thank you. Perfect, thanks. Um, so, you know, real challenge, but real opportunity as well. Um, I think one of the big opportunities and really how we should be thinking about the ultimate promise of mobility is that it really kind of flips the traditional relationship between you know, technology and productivity and the way businesses organize themselves to meet their, their users' requirements, um, it flips that on its head, you know, regardless of whether the user is a customer or an employee or a partner or someone else in their kind of uh, extended supply chain. Um, you know, a lot of sort of enterprise technology has sort of historically sort of significantly shaped how companies actually organize themselves. So the typical back, middle, front office paradigm that is being heavily disrupted with, you know, the advent of, you know, cloud and mobile and, and sort of big data analytics um, comes ultimately from the limitations of a lot of the technology that's deployed, both both infrastructure and application. So in a mobile era, really, this, this flips on its head. Um, business value is increasingly created and there's increasing amount of opportunity to create new business value at the point of users' interaction with business data and with business content. Uh, and it's that point of interaction um, that can carry new value in terms of context. So, you know, business value is increasingly becoming determined by sort of end user requirements, if you like, rather than uh, being limited or restricted by um, the sort of IT infrastructure that's in place. So just on the next slide, um, to put this another way, you know, I think mobile gives enterprises a potentially better deal out of Conway's law, which, you know, I, I guess infamously states that the design of applications and software is determined by, uh, you know, the way those designing it are, are organized and communicate with one another. Um, I think with mobility, it really requires companies to increasingly make their software and application design led by the sometimes fluctuating, certainly more complex needs of uh, users in this multi-device world that we are 
that we are entering. And we can already see the impact of that on uh, the greater focus within companies across the software development lifecycle, across business process, and the creation of new business process in terms of, you know, agile methods, DevOps methods, um, giving them a uh, closer sort of mirroring, if you like, of how users interact with their application experiences and how teams are organized to deliver them. So from a content and a content management point of view, therefore, it's really important that the consumption of content either singularly and then within collaborative workflows across users uh, is not impeded by the means of ac accessing that content. Otherwise, essentially, you know, the, the opportunity have, we have with cloud and mobile uh, will, um, you know, not be able to be actualized and will, you know, will essentially be re replicating the issues of the past where the, the limitations and the technologies uh, that are being put in place by enterprises uh, essentially determine um, what users can do with data and content rather than the other way around. So on, on the next slide, um, so how do uh, you know enterprises make this happen um, and what specifically does this mean for how companies manage content? Um, so firstly, you know, we've typically thought of enterprise mobility as being all about the movement of users, right? So we typically think about it in terms of devices, whether that's a tablet or a smartphone in, in someone's pocket or in a bag and they're walking around in mobile contexts, mobile environments. Um, in, in a lot of ways, you know, that, that's obviously sort of self-evident, but in a lot of ways that's led uh, companies and, and actually a lot of um, vendors on the supply side uh, believing that just getting content out to devices understood as being on the edge of some kind of linear enterprise IT stack um, as, as being sufficient. I mean, what they really need to think about um, is how uh, the delivery of content-based workflows can actually allow companies to be more agile in how they deliver experiences to their users and customers. So, you know, going from an understanding of sort of enterprise mobility as mobile being really all about the users, we just need to get stuff to these folks who are uh, mobile, really to thinking about how these kind of technologies can help the, the enterprise be mobile, i.e. responsive in terms of how they uh, deliver um, experiences to their users. And that by definition will necessitate the reimagining of existing business processes. So you know, thinking about how content and data can become the center of these processes and not just kind of coral is on the edge of essentially PC-based processes, uh, and also how to generate intelligence from these content-based workflows and how to use the metadata around that content to add value to the content within those user workflows. And I think this is one of the really, really important things about mobile that people often uh, don't quite understand. You, you know, it's the... Uh, content within enterprise is often seen as a kind of depreciating asset over time. But I think through the adding of contextual value to that content, a lot of which will increasingly become through mobile attributes, it can actually enhance the value of content within within workflows. Just on the, on the next slide, um, so thinking about what this means uh, sort of all together, um, you know, content, the contextualization of uh, content within workflows, the intelligence around the access and use of content and how that intelligence can add value to the content within workflows uh, is all becoming an increasingly important capability within enterprises' broader productivity programs. And I think one of the sort of ultimate goals really here for companies is that, you know, the data and the content passing in and out of applications that themselves are sort of constantly iterated on agile, more agile uh, SDLT methods, essentially turns the data and the content into a monetizable sort of digital inventory. Um, so, you know, I think uh, this is really significant um, implications in terms of how we think about content with, within the within work getting done. So, just on the on the next slide, uh, and just before I kind of seg um, into uh, into LOIC's uh, section. So we're just going to kind of think about this on a more granular basis. Um, and what we're going to do is to look at how we grow the value of content through mobility, looking at you know productivity, identity and security and governance. 
Um, so just on, on the next slide, thinking about um, you know mobility and what that means for productivity. Um, if you just want to build build the, uh, I think there's a little bit of a build in here, Loic. Um, perfect. Thank you. So you know, I think there's a certain sort of semantic set of understandings here uh, from old world to new world that we need to sort of get our head around. So, you know, an old world, sort of PC world, productivity is essentially shaped by new apps and new devices. Um, I think increasingly we need to think about it as um, enterprises being able to convert, you know, data that's traditionally essentially been locked up in back-end repositories into this sort of digital inventory that I talked about on the previous slide to give that you know, more rapid hyper responsiveness to end users um, that, you know, pre-mobile was, was very challenging to do. So hopefully that, that gives a, a little bit of a food for thought in terms of the bigger picture of how, you know, we're beginning to see new imperatives around mobility, productivity, and how we understand content, you know, within the context of, of mobile productivity. I'm just going to hand over to, to Loic to talk um, to talk through some of these issues in the context of what, what Caligo do around content. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much, Chris, and I apologize for the slide uh, uh, not uh, slowing, not going as uh, as smoothly as they should uh, through the process. Um, no worries. Yeah, let's, give a little bit, let's give a little bit of context to uh, to what uh, you just uh, presented to us, and uh, you know we've been uh, we've been working with different uh, organization. Uh, around on, on the topic of the mobility and, and, you know, how does that fit into the enterprise today. So, you know, I'd just like to quote first a, um, um, a sentence from uh, the Vice President of Chief Analyst of Market Intelligence from AIM, Bob Larive, which <clears throat> basically, you know, uh, summarize a little bit this is, mobility is in an era of great opportunity for business organizations to maximize the return and value of their SharePoint system by extending SharePoint capabilities and process engagement beyond corporate walls. Mobile device use will improve productivity and operational efficiency, enabling employees, partners, and suppliers to interact on an everywhere, anytime basis. I think, you know, this is where you were, you were uh, presenting to us here is the extension, you know, in time and space of the access to that content. Um, so... <clears throat> The um, you know the, the the SharePoint report that uh, came up you know uh, from the IAM uh, report and been working with that the number one you know usefulness um, of the mobility is really to the the ability to distribute good documents in a controlled way. Uh, this was rated as an important to very important for 90% of the IAM survey respondents and the you know, of course, came with the second one, which was the ability to work offline, which was pretty obvious, you know. Um, but if you really look at everything, you know, the apply and edit metadata that you mentioned to us as well was very important, and the mobile de the mobile device governance. You know, it's all it's all around really the uh, the data and uh, the how this data fits, as you mentioned. So. And, you know, let's take a deeper dive into the uh, the MCM, the mobile content management market. Um, you know, and and augment a little bit on on Chris's comment. So let's look at the architecture underlying the category and discuss some of the application. You know, we've we've been learning from thousands of our customers. You know, you add the user SharePoint today, and um, we hope that this will inspire you. You know, to provide more adoption of the MCM in your organization. So. Really, first, what does MCM mean, you know, to us? Um, it's it's actually the intersection to uh, two large, sorry, went too fast, intersection of two large, fast-growing markets. Uh, the first is the enterprise content management, or ECM. ECM has a, quite a bit of a sub-segments, you know, the traditional uh, record and information management rim markets, which consists of the legacy big iron application and system. But we also have the newer mobile-enabled little brother to RIM, which is the Enterprise File Sync and Share, uh, EFSS. Um, so those two segments have been, you know, kind of, you know, running against each other and colliding. Uh, and like, you know, since vendors like Microsoft and more EFSS-like features to their SharePoint or Office 365, we've seen that the, you know, that the space, the traditional space of the EFSS vendors, has been reducing. Uh, to the uh, to the um, 
to, to the features that Microsoft is adding, and then they're expanding into the record features like metadata support. There is also the next segment, which is the Enterprise Mobility Management, uh, EMMM. Uh, this fast growing market consists of a number of capabilities that support deployment of devices and application that enable enterprise mobility. Um, you know, the, the mobile and this space, you know, also called MDM, mobile device management, uh, but, you know, they have involved now to include capabilities like uh, mobile application management, uh, so known as MAP. So those, those areas here are trying to survive and expand. And this is where it gets interesting, because the vendor of the ACM and EMM space are now creating solutions that they converge around the need for, to, to mobilize content. Uh, it's, it's more about the content more, more than ever. EMM vendors, for example, have evolved from the simple MDM to offering content storage solution and apps to mobilize content. Uh, an example would be uh, the AirWatch content locker. On the other hand, you know, the vendors from the content space, particularly the file sync and share folks, uh, provide mobile apps and administration tools uh, as part of their storage solution. So similar solution with different, uh, you know, background genealogies. This is the, the mobile content management or MCM market. Uh, this market consists of a number of such segments, such as the document distribution, the mobile collaboration, mobile forms, email management, but also include the mobile app development as we, uh, we, uh, we can see. So this is where Coligo comes in. You know, we focus on the, we, we are focused mainly on the MCM uh, market and we have a unique approach that, uh, you know, has been uh, validated by uh, hundreds of our customers. Um, and, and because, we you know, we are, we're trying to focus strictly on the enterprise mobility, uh, we leave the, the storage to other people. So we try to be agnostic to storage. So, um, let's let's spend some time and look at the different architecture and approach to uh, the mobile uh, content um, access to mobile content. So first, you know, start where the mobile is stored, um, and more often than not, you know, you got a lot of data spread around multiple systems. As you mentioned, Chris, it's not like one you know one type of repository; it's multiple uh, backend system, uh, which makes it a very confusing mess for end users. Uh, unless you can provide a, a real great, you know, mobile option and device access to uh, to to enable the user adoption and, and remove the adoption problem. Um, so, and of course, you know, security and governance will play a game into this, will play a space in this, and without proper management, mobile device can represent significant risk in this. So, what are the the, the option for the the, the, the content? So. Uh, we've, we've identified three main common architecture alternatives. Um, you know, the first one being the uh, secure browser. According to the mobility index from Good Technology, you know, which is now part of BlackBerry, secure browser was the fastest growing app category in Q3 of last year. Um, you know, it enables the users to access multiple content repository from a simple app. Uh, you know, there's a lot of advantage to that solution. Uh, you know, they don't require the data to be moved to a new repository. Data stays in place, you know, in SharePoint or, or any other repository. And um, <clears throat> it is just accessed directly using HTTPS. So, you know, because of uh, the fact that it's a browser, browser, most of the features of the repository, you know, including metadata, can be enabled on a mobile device. Um, and, and, you know, the... Um, but but the, the, you know, the security of this, or the secure browser approach, you know, falls short in a, in a couple of areas. Even though they provide a metadata, which was it's a very important part, as, as Chris mentioned, um, you know, the uh, first one, you know, despite the advance in HTML5 technology, applications still lack the performance of native apps. You know, you, you, you are uh, dependent on the, on the network. And um, a second one would be the secure, you know, secure browsers are really only useful if you are connected to a network. Uh, they lack the uh, capability to enable data to be utilized offline. And in poor coverage areas, you know, this presents a, an issue. And, you know, as we mentioned, you know, earlier, the, uh, the user adoption, you know, is, is key. And uh, offline, you know, access is, is uh, fairly um, uh, common those days for users. So it's kind of expected from the users. So what is the second one? You know, um, the content hub. In this configuration, you know, data from multiple sources is synchronized with the server 
or hug on the internet. So this data in turn is synced, you know, with an app on the mobile device. Um, you know, typically that would be a native app that provides a richer user experience than the, uh, the navigator. Uh, but the big downside of this approach is the complexity and risk. Essentially, you know, the content app requires data from multiple repository to be, co uh, to be copied uh, to a file store. Uh, this adds complexity to deployment and support and introduces a, a risk of data loss that is meant to be managed um, because of the data is being copied. So um, it is also possible to cache the data on a mobile device, uh, but most vendors do not, you know, provide that. So, you know, the, 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 re the users, again, requ are required to have a full-time connection to the network to access the content. And the, um, because the content app acts to store and distribute all the data in the system, often the unique features of the various content repository are done down. So, for example, there are very few content app solutions that support enterprise metadata, um, and which, you know, at that point, um, take away all the value of the data or most of the value of the data, and definitely does not provide the record management application um, processes. So. Um, this lack of support for metadata span solution, you know, and this is really where the EFSS vendors are, EMM and ECM, most of the time. So um, the last alternative option, you know, on the architecture that we've been uh, revisiting, you know, is the client-side synchronization. Um, in this configuration, you require quite of a sophisticated uh, synchronization technology, and uh, that will be in the mobile device. So that means that the device, you know, can sync directly with multiple repository. Um, you take away the hub requirements. Uh, it should be a much simpler solution, and the, the app is built on top of the sync engine using an SDK. So you can, you know, enable all sort of uh, uh, native app, you know, uh, capacity and functionality on the device. Um, the sync engine can also selectively cache data. Also, caching caching is not um, also, caching is not, um, sorry for that. Uh, also, caching is not the, um, uh, directly on the, on, on the, um, implemented on mobile device. So, the opens up record management application can be implemented directly on the mobile device, and, um, it's, it's, uh, much more, uh, much more functionality on that. And, and to come back again on Chris' comments, uh, you having the metadata and the uh, building the value around the data will help you as well, um, you know, value and bring the value of that data to the organization and not just dump stuff in a, a repository, you know, um, on the corporate network. Um, so, and of course, you know, this, this, um, this uh, scenario has been, you know, improving with the improvement of the mobile devices you know, with the fast processor and the lots of memory now being available on this device, um, the client-side caching is now reality. And I think it's this is the part that's changing the the, the, the game on the mobile content management. Um, okay. So, you know, I mentioned the ability to build native apps quickly and client-side uh, sync technology. Um, so this is where the, the, you know, let's let's discuss a little bit where uh, how does that apply, you know, to Coligo? So the uh, the apps that are purpose built to facilitate the MCM content application that I mentioned earlier, such as document dis distribution, mobile collaboration, mobile form and email management. You know, today mobile workers expect great experience from enterprise app. So the same way as the app, you know, they use in their personal life. So the the barrier between the work apps and the personal apps are broken down and user, you know, they don't, they don't accept anymore, uh, you know, the way they were doing their work, in, you know, in the old way. And whatever they use on the private side, you know, they expect the same experience on the work. So we've, we've spent some time, you know, at Coligo to uh, work with user experience and specialists and engineers, you know, to ensure that the apps meet the employee's expectation and increase the productivity and efficiency. So it goes without saying that it's really important to support the work style of information worker you know, and but also make sure that we cover the requirement and the regulation of the company. So, you know, and according to recent survey, they, you know, the users on average, you know, uh, use uh, three different devices on a daily basis. So 
uh, content apps, you know, need to work on multiple operating system. And, you know, over the time we had to expand and span our capacity, you know, from Windows to Mac to Android and iOS. So, um, you know, and of course we have our traditional plugin for the Microsoft Outlook for workers as part that they're working in the email. So this is how we've been, um, you know, covering this, um, uh, this functionality for our users, and we'll get deeper into that a little bit further in the presentation. So, Chris, let me um, go back to you, and let's uh, discuss a little bit more about the, you know, the next topic after the mobility, which was the identity. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Loic. Uh, I think, yeah, there's another build here. So, um, yeah, we're going to shift focus a little bit just to talk about um, identity and security. I'm going to kind of take these two together briefly before handing back to, to Loic again. So, um, you know, once more, I, I think there's a, a shift here semantically that we need to do in our mindsets to really understand, uh, you know, what mobility and what managing content in a mobile era means for some of these things that traditionally have meant, you know, something very different when it came to, to PC, the kind of PC model. Um, so from a, a sort of identity point of view, I think one of the really interesting things we're seeing amongst, I guess, kind of early adopters um, of these approaches is the kind of building of rich semantic profiles um, around their users in terms of, uh, you know, contextual and, and behavioral data and using that to determine access as part of the security regime. So we're, we're very much seeing, I think, if context be the bridge between identity and security and you know, Compass looking at a, a much broader range of attributes, many of those, uh, you know, usefully contextual uh, to provide that kind of identity and access management. Um, and, and on the next slide, just uh, sort of tying this into how uh, companies are thinking about uh, security, um, Again, amongst sort of early adopters, uh, when it comes to sort of mobile, mobile strategy, mobile deployments, um, I think we're, we're seeing uh, enterprises combine those kind of rich semantic user profiles with, you know, an increasing amount of intelligence uh, in terms of threats to their infrastructure across which, you know, content and data is passing, uh, and intelligence in terms of the performance of, of the passage of that content and data. Um, to provide a, a sort of more predictive security posture. So, um, you know, quite a um, subtle seeming, but, but I think actually pretty uh, fundamental shift in terms of what, you know, identity and security mean together um, in the context of, of productivity in the mobile era. So, uh, again, it's a semantic shift I think we need to uh, take note of. And I think, Loic, you're going to just go touch on uh, how Caligo thinks about uh, security. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we are working with, you know, global companies, and, you know, uh, some of, the, of them are the most risk conscious in the world. And, you know, anything around data very, of, you know, very often is, is pretty high on security, you know. And as we... We've seen, you know, the, the the value of the organization is shifting from uh, uh, system to data. You know, it's it's more and more important. So uh, we are definitely focused on security and managing the risk of the data. You know, and then the data. Now, also we realize that being on a, on a mobile space, you know, uh, increases that risk. So, um, you know, we've been we've been adding, you know, all kind of functionality. You know, authentication. Is, is, in our opinion, key to a robust enterprise mobile solution, you know. So we, we definitely integrate and work with the, um, you know, the Active Directory solution. You know, administrator can configure ADFS or Azure AD, uh, and, of course, single sign-on is supported. Um, but we also, you know, push and support multi-factor authentication in the apps. The... Um, as we mentioned earlier as well, you know, we are at the, con you know, the conjunction of multiple type of solution, you know, and we mentioned MDM earlier. One of the functionality that, you know, we, we see very important is the ab ability to uh, clean up the device or wipe the device remotely, you know. Uh, it's mandatory, you know, and 
in any mobile scenario that that functionality needs to be there. So we allow you know through our console at the administrator to deauthorize device or users and and also wipe out any sensitive corporate data being on that device. Um, and of course, when we talk about governance and best practice, uh, you know, security is at the top of our mind here. And the um, you know, I've, you know, the advantage of our console also is allow us to keep a full tracking and reporting on the Coligo console of the um, you know the the, the the activity happening with the data, and we can also build uh, consistent policies you know uh, across repositories. So. The console provides the ability to prevent the data loss by producing reports of activities down to the fine level, but it also can, you know, uh, uh, help identify areas of risk before the data loss can happen, and um, you know, and so on. So we, we've been doing a lot of the, 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 the what you would expect from those application. You know, finally, data within our apps is secured and encrypted. Uh, it's secured in transit. It's, it's secure at rest. You know, and uh, we also, uh, in certain cases, we're going to see later on, we're able to partner and enhance that security with a, an MDM vendor, you know, on top of uh, the, the MDM functionality that we provide today. So it's definitely something on top of our mind. But um, let's uh, maybe uh, jump to the next step, which is the governance. You know, it's also another big area for us, and uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about this. Chris. Yeah, sure. So, sure. Thanks. Thanks, Loic. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, take, taking all of these together really is the way to think about it. These, these obviously aren't silos. And certainly, as I kind of pointed out in the previous two, you know, identity and security, you know, we're seeing a emerging sort of conceptually and I think uh, practically in, in solutions um, where previously that, you know, that typically hadn't been the case and where within enterprise IT departments there may well have been separate team sanctioned to deal with, with each. Um, so, uh, you know, governance really um, is, is hugely important, you know, in the context of uh, you know, productivity and identity and security. And I think one of the things we're, we're seeing amongst the early adoption um, is companies looking to create sort of consistent governance schemas across their data and content types. Um, so that they're not looking at this in silos and so that there's one sort of less impediment uh, to the easy flow of content in and out of application experiences that I, as I pointed to in the kind of first section of my presentation, um, are increasingly going to be sort of, you know, uh, iterated and re-released uh, in a much more agile and, and rapid way than they traditionally have been. So making sure there's a consistent governance, consistent governance schema um, to, uh, you know, be part of that smoother, sort of more agile delivery, I think is, is hugely important. Um, and, you know, we've touched on this a, a few times, but the, the role of um, metadata, and in particular metadata in terms of dynamic shaping of policies around access to content within workflows um, is, is a really sort of interesting area where we're seeing lots of, um, you know, lots of effort being put. So, you know, essentially a move from kind of role-based only to you know, contextual governance where you know, metadata can help uh, determine access within these mobile workflows. Um, so, uh, as I said, kind of all, all of these things taken together really point to quite a different way of thinking about how to uh, manage content in a mobile world and how to, you know, make sure it's delivering business value um, in more mobile consumable experiences. Thank you, Chris. Um, yep, this is very uh, very close to our art, I think. You know, the the, the governance and um, the you know the way we've been developing and the way we've been evolving over time. If you follow a little bit of the history of Coligo, has been. Uh, uh, you know, pointing toward that direction of adding more governance and, uh, you know, this is at the end of the day, this is the real uh, value of the data, you know, it's it's how you govern this data and how you manage the data. Um, so on the, uh, you know, as, as we discussed earlier, the security, you know, we were, um, you know, we're pretty strong on that. What we've been adding with the uh, console, which is a central admin of our 
technology. You know, it's giving us the possibility to push content and policy. So policy can be used to push the content from a specific location to individual mobile devices. You know, choose a favorite location or whitelist or blacklist. You know, or, or even you know all the way to specific 3G sync options. So you know, we restrict device activities such as you know, open in or print and, and, and specify app pass codes and remotely wipe data from the device, et cetera, et cetera. So the data, you know, that is on the device is fully managed and governed and controlled uh, centrally from the, um, you know, both the SharePoint uh, rights uh, of access and, and, and management policies, but also our Coligo console. Um, you know, the, um, and as you mentioned as well, the second one is the metadata capacity. Uh, you know, bringing more context around the data is very key, and the um, the ability to apply and edit metadata, you know, from mobile device is is a full part of our governance uh, story, in our opinion. So, um, you know, there the many organizations are migrating their less sensitive content to the cloud, you know, the through Office 365, and they kept the most sensitive one on premise. And the ability to surface content from uh, those hybrid environment is very important. And make the physical connection, you know, location invisible to users is very important for productivity. And this is this is also, uh, in our opinion, part of the governance. And probably would fit at some point into the scenario you you, you mentioned earlier about you know the conceptual uh, uh, flows of data, you know, being through the metadata, being able to be pushed in different locations. Uh, and, and being uh, handled in a different way. Um, the, the last point on the um, on the uh, governance for us is really the tracking and reporting. You know, making sure that we have we provide visibility. You know, on users and content activity. Uh, it's it's very critical in the regulated uh, industries. Uh, analytic tools, you know, tied to the SharePoint mobility solution, uh, makes it very simple. So we have uh, and, you know, admin can monitor the usage of activity by user or group. Or type of activity, or you know, or period, or device, uh, you know, through the the console, and that's provide a, uh, a lot of ways to analyze and audit the data, and 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 monitor the uh, the adoption, but also what data um, is being other data is being uh, used and consumed. So, uh, you know, let's um, let's take a. a um, uh, uh, Look at uh, you know how this is being used in a, in a specific use case. So um, we have an example here of aerospace and defense industry. Uh, this is a large customer that was looking to deploy tens of thousands of iPad and iPhone uh, to their employees uh, for mobile collaboration and uh, document distribution. Um, you know um, because those employees are mobile, uh, they work in remote environments. You know at the customer. Uh, they needed an easy use, an easy way to use uh, an app with offline access to documents uh, stored on premise in SharePoint. So obviously, the documents being highly sensitive, security was a top concern. Uh, they had unique requirements, you know, around a, a multi-factor authentication that was uh, proprietary, and you know, in this implementation, and um, they. Um, they had some complicated things, you know, uh, in the requirements, such as uh, the, the desire to deploy the app from the Apple App Store uh, using an AirWatch an Air MDM, you know. So there were some tough requirements for sure, but there were, you know, requirements that made total sense in their environment and the way they were consuming those data. So we were able to uh, solve this with, uh, you know, off-the-shelf solution, you know, that was configured to support the unique requirements. Um, you know, we 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 de develop we deployed successfully at this account, and um, and to our understanding today, this is the largest single deployment of an enterprise iOS app you know in the world. So you know they've been you know uh, going through um, the usage of the technology um, since then. So uh, let me uh, send it back you know to you, Chris. Just let's go back into uh, you know the. Um, uh, the discussion of the uh, the user adoption and, and, and how that uh, fits into sure. the space. Right. Sure. Um, yeah, so, you know, I think one of the things I wanted to, to kind of point out, and this is uh, maybe a little bit sort of broader looking across what's happening in terms of enterprise mobility and mobile adoption, um, you know, point out that the really 
seems to be a compound effect uh, in early adoption whereby, um, you know, as you can see on the left-hand side, you know, we, we have a third of, of firms who say they're significantly increasing their mobility budgets and a quarter increasing their dedicated mobile headcounts by over 50%. So that's, you know, sort of net new resource around particular mobile skills brought into the, in, into the business. Um, and, you know, customer responsiveness and employee productivity, the, the main drivers. One, one of the really interesting things there actually is that you know, having asked this kind of question in the surveys that we do amongst IT and line of business decision makers, you know, essentially where's your mobile priority or where's your prioritization in terms of mobilizing different uh, business workflows? Uh, we saw a change last year in the data from you know, the traditional sort of picture which had been filled for Salesforce and then kind of customer facing marketing service related activities and then kind of general internal business processes. So actually the general internal business processes um, sort of leapfrogging a little bit, if you like, uh, to become the most uh, often cited um, uh, priority within the surveys. And that's not some work of the sample size or sample data we've been we've been asking this longitudinally for, for quite a long time so you know I, I think really uh, a, a growing st steadily growing proportion of companies thinking about you know where the business value gains comes from investing in mobilizing sort of b2b b2e workflows um, and you know one of the things we see amongst firms is sort of significant increasing their budgets bringing new headcount in focusing on a broader range of use cases within their organization is that, you know, mobile management taken as a kind of broad umbrella of technologies um, really seems to be a priority, and especially amongst firms who say they have some kind of center of excellence, whether they actually call it that or not, you know, technology council, advanced technology group, they're called different things in different companies, but those who have kind of internally brought more cross-disciplinary organization around their mobile strategy are much more likely to have in, implemented some of the technologies we've been talking about uh, on this webcast so far. So things like MDM and MAM and content management services, mobile content management. Um, and, you know, those that have, um, you know, deployed uh, one of these services, more, much more likely to have deployed multiple of these services. And then, the, the, you know, this seems, as on the right-hand side of this slide, to be a really sort of accelerant effect across the life cycle. Um, so 75% of companies with B2E mobile apps, so you know, three quarters of companies that have deployed some kind of mobile app for their employees, you know, already use some kind of analytics to track the usage of those apps, measure the experience, um, and you know, almost 60% having deployed B2C mobile apps do some kind of A-B testing on that app. So really all this is, um, I guess, uh, you know, evidence to support companies, um, you know, looking at this sort of intersection of mobile and productivity in, in, in light of some of what we've been saying and, you know, beginning to figure out practically what it means for your own business because you know, there are now peers across different vertical industries who are sort of striking out and trying to move from this kind of opportunistic way of looking at mobility to something much more strategic. Um, and, you know, as analysts were often asked about which, you know, verticals are early adopters, that was a hard, that was an easier question to answer sort of three, four years ago where you may call out retail and financial services, potentially manufacturing, potentially healthcare, to, you know, a much broader range of, of uh, enterprises across verticals now uh, sort of striking out and investing in mobility. So, you know, taken together, I think there's a compound effect in early adoption, so I'd really encourage folks to think you know, very actively about what this means in terms of implementations within their own context. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Chris. And, and you know, we, we, we have a little bit of the, um, you know, we, we provide that uh, from Coligo's side, we provide that visibility and, um, and, and uh, capacity to track the adoption of the platform, you know, through, the, um, through our console. Uh, and, and, you know, we know we've been aware of the complexity of that and, and uh, the importance of it from a company perspective. You know, they make the investment, they want to get the investment to, to work. What we also um, find in, in our conversation with the, 
um, you know, with the customers and, and, and our prospects is that, you know, it's it's an IT balancing act. We, we've been, um, you know, this adoption thing and the, 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 the the adoption of the application and you know in the um, in the world in, in, in the enterprise is is really a balance between what the workers expectations are and the enterprise requirements but making sure that the experience of the user you know meets uh, meet their, their their expectation and and they um, we've, we've seen that you know when you put too much uh, requirement and too much you balance it too much toward the security what happened, you know, if you let go too much on the user adoption side, um, this 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 gets this balance, and then you know you get the um, opposite effect. So really, at the end of the day, is you know being able to provide the the, the, the requirement the enterprise is looking for and the working expectation. And you know, um, the every information worker in mo is mobile now, you know. And the mobile strategy is no longer a nice to have. It's a must have for the enterprise. And uh, when we talk to Gartner, you know, the number one reason why mobile impact organization success is the ability for users to work from anywhere. It's the number one thing today. And uh, we all do it, you know. They, they also, um, is another aspect to this is that the user want a unified view into their content. Uh, no matter what device, you know, they are on, and no matter what information is stored, you know the the look and feel needs to remain the same, and um, and and there is another aspect that seems to be uh, more and more uh, pressing is that the workers want to use their own device, um, and the the, the 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 pressure of the bring your own device strategy on the organization seems to be uh, growing you know even more these days, um, and the. Um, so you know that's something that the, the organization has to take into consideration. And when you you know when it comes to the security and balancing the IT Act, you know the fact that it's it's a company device or it's a bring it's it's a it's a private device makes a big difference. Uh, finally, the um, the information worker have uh, less and less patience, you know, for complicated legacy software. So the um, there is an expectation growing about simplicity of consumer app, and we've seen that, you know, in the organization, you know, where IT was able to impose more and more a um, um, type of a, of a system, where you see now decisions are coming more and more from the business, where the business uh, owns some budget and come back and say, you know, put some some of their requirement on the table towards IT. So, um, uh, so it's 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 becoming more of a of a working between business and IT, and and um, you know the organization that get it right, you know um, you know that communication between the two services are rewarded rewarded with the uh, much higher engaged and productive workforce, uh, and and you know can go to a much higher uh, adoption rate. Um, so, um, so you know, the in terms of the organization, uh, I think you know what we've seen as well on the top uh, requirements, you know, from a an enterprise uh, application uh, strategy is um, more and more we start to see the the requirement to manage multiple um, uh, um, managing records in various mobile devices. You know, we see that people working from a laptop, iPad, and 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 uh, iPhone, you know, or, or tablets and and a phone. So this is becoming more and more the norm. This is becoming more uh, the requirements. Um, the prevention of data loss is um, becoming more, you know, uh, necessary as well from a an application standpoint. So being able to detect or being part of a prevention of uh, that data loss is important. That's why we've been developing that uh, uh, console uh, management, and the um, you know the ability to provide a compliance capacity, you know, to enforce the compliance specific compliance or policies for a specific vertical or specific areas of business, um, you know, makes it more and more important as well. Um, you know, so we we are um, we've been working towards that. Um, and finally, you know, another concern many organizations have is to keep content in place, you know, to get the highest possible return on the investment. 
they want to maximize the utilization and leverage existing record management process and security protocol. I think this is where the metadata, you know, story that you were talking earlier makes a l more and more sense. And that's why not forgetting that, that aspect, you know, when you get into a project with a uh, mobility is important. Um, you know, being able to provide context around your data and uh, being able to search and find and, and sort the data is also a key requirement. So, uh, you know, before we, um, you know, we get further, just, just a few, um, you know, information about Coligo on, the, on our company. You know, we've been around for 16 years. Um, we, we are really focused on helping organizations, you know, better manage information, collaborate and leverage the core IT system, you know, around SharePoint. Um, we're also expanding outside of SharePoint, you know, because we believe that the multiple repository will be a very important part in the future. Um, you know, we've been a, a leading vendor in the SharePoint space, you know, client synchronization technology since 2007. We've got uh, patents, you know, six patents in this area, um, you know, and, and uh, we've been serving customers around the globe. Uh, you know, for many years and, and continue to do so, including, you know, large Fortune 500. Uh, and just a quick one, we are present in multiple verticals, you know, oil and gas utilities being a very big <laughs> part of our business, but we also, you know, any industries we are, which, which has regulation, which has any requirements on governance and data, uh, any, any, any industries that has the need, you know, to uh, share, you know, content, push content or share content in a secure and uh, mobile manner is, is part of our space. So, you know, just that you know. And, you know, of course, uh, this is, um, you know, the, our company, Coligo. Our solution is called Coligo Engage 2016. And we are available on multiple OS. And uh, every customer can get a five for free license uh, going to our uh, platform. Okay, so just before we wrap up, I uh, believe uh, we might have a few minutes for some questions. So um, I was okay. Watch, are you taking back on for the question? Do you have any question for us? Question? Hi, hi, Luik. I have one question here, if that's okay. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so if you wanted to roll out this mobile solution to hundreds or thousands of users, are there any means to do so and set policies? And if so, how easily is it done? Okay, yes, so um, the advantage of the uh, console is that, uh, of course, we integrate, fully integrate with Active Directory, as we mentioned in the presentation. So we would be able, you know, to um, um, connect with your Active Directory, apply all the policies that you may have, you know, around uh, each user, and um, and and um, apply that to their console. And the user will just receive, you know, uh, will, will just have to access the console and install the application. And of course, the application will be uh, tailored, you know, depending on the group they are in. Uh, there will be some specific uh, feature that you could uh, apply or not apply and you can restrict as well the access to the data BI based on their policy in the Active Directory, um, you know, on SharePoint, for example. Uh, so all of that will be done in a very seamless way. And then, of course, after that, the administrator will have his console where he would see all his users and, and his group of users, and he will be able to, you know, uh, take out a, a user in, in a click and add a new user or reallocate rights or change rights or change any policies that they want from a centrally um, um, repository. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you, Luik. That's the only question we have. Luik, will I be seeing you in Vienna in next week? Of course, and I hope we'll see many of you. Excellent. That's absolutely brilliant. Uh, Louis and Chris, thank you so much for your time today and for a wonderful presentation. Okay, so that's, that's it, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to today's webinar. For more top-quality training, 
look no further than the European SharePoint Conference in Vienna, which is next week, the 14th to the 17th of August, or sorry, of uh, November 2016. See SharePointEurope.com for full details. That's it for now. Join us again for our next webinar on Wednesday, December 7th for Code UI Test Automation of SharePoint Applications with the Microsoft Edge Web, Dev Web Driver by Stefano Tempesta, VP of Engineering at EF Education First Switzerland. Thank you for all your time today. We'll see you in Vienna next week. Take care and goodbye.